Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at the desktop operating system Nomad BSD. This runs from a USB drive to which user data and system changes are persistently saved and offers a portable alternative to running Windows, Mac OS or Linux. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we are on the Nomad BSD website at nomadbsd.org where it very succinctly describes itself as a persistent live system for USB flash drives based on FreeBSD. And if you're wondering what FreeBSD is, which is what Nomad BSD is based on, FreeBSD is an operating system that was released in 1993 and which was developed from the Berkeley Software Distribution or BSD version of Unix. And FreeBSD is its own website uh, over here. There it is. We can learn all about it on the About page. And FreeBSD is an operating system with a particular focus on networking and security and stability and speed. FreeBSD also provides binary compatibility with Linux, which means that most Linux applications can be installed in FreeBSD, but it's important to stress that FreeBSD is not a Linux distribution. FreeBSD is also command line only, it hasn't got a graphical desktop, so what they've done over here with the Nomad BSD is to take FreeBSD to add a graphical desktop and to wrap everything up in an image which can run persistently from a USB drive. So let's go to the download section over here and get hold of a Nomad BSD. You'll see there are instructions for installing it on a drive using all sorts of different operating systems, but we'll get, we're in Windows here, so we'll just download the file over there. We'll click on download. And in fact, I'm not going to download because I've downloaded the file already. There it is. I won't waste their bandwidth by downloading it again. So I'll cancel from that. And if we go to the Windows desktop there, you can see the file. There it is, about 2.3 gigabytes. Now, you might have noticed this is an LZMA file. This is a compressed file. We need to extract it. And I've actually installed here a 7-zip to do that. So if I right click, I can go to 7-zip and extract here, hopefully, and it'll actually extract our file, and you'll see it's actually an IMG, an image file, not an ISO file, which you'd normally have for an operating system. And that's because we're going to be writing a persistent USB drive, which can actually be changed when you, you boot from it, can actually keep its settings, you can store data rights, etc. So we can't do that from an ISO file, that's why this is an image file. So let's let the extraction complete. And uh, there we are, it's finished, our image file is coming out at what a just under four gigabytes. And we now need to write this to our USB drive, which has to be at least four gigabytes in size, or at least five gigabytes in size, which effectively means eight gigabytes if you're gonna use this with a Mac. And the particular drive I'm using is a 32 gigabyte Gorilla Drive. You might remember I tested out the Gorilla Drive in a group test a few videos back, or quite a lot of videos back. Very nice drive, got a fast drive. And I've got this plugged into my test rig, and I'm going to write to it using a Etcher, Belena Etcher, which is up there. But I've got Etcher running, I think, down here. If you haven't got Etcher, you can download it from the Belena site. I'll give you a link on screen. There you are for the Belena Etcher. And so we just need to select the image, which is sitting there, as you can see, like that. We've already selected our drive. We can, oh, I always check, it is onto the drive I expect, the 32 gigabyte drive, that's fine. And we now just click on Flash. And uh, Windows will check, because it always does, and that'll start off to, to write. And again, we'll speed on through, because this will take quite a while. And uh, there we are, it's now finished and validated. Whatever you do, don't reformat the drive now. Windows is just confused by this live US drive sitting inside it. So all we need to do now is to close down everything we've got here in uh, Windows. I think I left that running, didn't I? Let's close that down as well. And we can uh, close down Windows and uh, boot up our new live USB drive. Right, here we are rebooting our PC with the Nomad BSD live USB drive in it. And I should point out that on your system, you might have to go into the BIOS to set up the computer to boot from the USB drive. And you might also have to turn off, oh, one second, we're here. Let's press uh, enter to continue. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? You might also have to uh, turn off secure boot in your BIOS to allow your computer to boot from a USB drive. 
And exactly how you do that will depend on your computer. But if you want more information, look at my video all about PC BIOS settings. Anyway, this is probably going to take a little bit of time, so we'll skip on through until something more exciting occurs. And uh, this is what I'd call slightly more exciting. We've got a live mouse. Uh, we have got a live mouse. The hardware detection has worked. Slightly strange uh, display resolution, but I think we're still recording. It is only a setup after all. So I need to pick my uh, language. Go down to uh, English there. English uh, United Kingdom will do on that, won't it? That'll be OK. Well, next on that. Uh, we need to answer a few questions. That's fair enough. This will only happen for the first boot as it sets up our uh, persistent USB live drive. Uh, UK keyboard is fine, yes, and uh, no extra layouts needed. That's fine for my time zone. Password. Very, very nice password there. Uh, we're not going to encrypt the drive, though we could, because FreeBSD can do all that kind of stuff. We'll take all the defaults there. That all looks fine, so we'll press Commit. And what it's now doing in creating a file system on the drive is giving us the space on the drive not used by the operating system, giving it back so we can use it to store user files, which is clearly very useful. This is all part of setting up the persistent USB drive. So we'll let this finish. And uh, there we are, all is complete. We now just need to click on Finish. And of course, that's going to uh, reboot our PC and hopefully it'll come back up again in a Nomad BSD. And uh, here we are back at this uh, screen. So let's press the enter again. And of course, this boot will be more straightforward. There's none of the configuration stuff to do. Oh, and look, we've arrived in a Nomad BSD. I feel we've gone to a Stargate territory. I imagine that Daniel Jackson is just uh, over that little sand dune over there. So uh, there we are. This is the Nomad BSD operating system. But like most operating systems, it's not ideally set up to show you on video out of the box. So I'm going to make a few changes to assist matters with recording, and I'll come back to you after that. So here we are booting back into Nomad BSD. Let's just press a key there. And as last time, this is a standard boot now. There's none of that configuration stuff to do. But since I spoke to you last, I have made various visual changes to make the operating system read better on video. I said I'd do that. And I've also been testing out various programs, saving a few files, so I can prove to you that this live USB drive we're working from here is persistent. You can save files and configuration settings on it and come back to them when you boot the game. Having said we won't see all the configuration stuff, we do get to this message, which is to select the right graphics driver for the system. I'm going to press Enter just to work through on that. And you can set things up to get rid of that. There are instructions for that in the manual. However, it's probably better to leave this check in place so you can use your live USB drive most easily on lots of different computers. Anyway, here we are now back on the Nomad BSD desktop. I do like the look of this system. I like the, uh, the background. They've chosen the default backing of this beautiful sand dune and the, the clear sky. And uh, you'll see down the bottom of the screen, you probably notice we've got a launcher, which is a very Mac-like sort of launcher. As you can see, we'll try out these icons uh, in a second. And at the top of the screen, we've got a panel, which sadly I can't make any bigger. There's some very small fonts for the date and time over there. And we've also got here a volume control, which is rather a sophisticated volume control, and we've also got here an icon to allow us to see all the drives on the system. Now, in addition to being able to do that, we can on this system also right-click the desktop to bring up a menu. So if I right-click here, you'll see a menu comes up. We can access all sorts of things, including the audio control we just looked at. And there's quite a few things pre-installed here in Nomad BSD. We've got, for example, there's Audacity. Look, let's run up Audacity, the audio editor. Remember, everything here is running from that live USB drive, so the speed will be cut back by that. Although that wasn't too bad, was it? This is perfectly usable, even running from a live USB drive. What else have we got here? We've got, uh, as you can see, VLC Media Player is there. We've got a Guinea for development. We'll look at that in a second. Under graphics, we've got GIMP. We've got Mirage down there to view images. Under what they call network, I'd probably call it internet. We've got lots of useful stuff for FTP package, email package, web browser, etc. So that's, that's all uh, rather good. Office is here, we've got LibreOffice installed. 
and then below that we've got settings, masses and masses of settings. Some of these are a bit difficult to get your head around what affects what, but I've been playing a lot with these to get this looking as good as I can for you to watch on video. There's lots of configurability here, both graphically and I think also in terms of coding if you really want to sort things out yourself. I haven't gone into that yet. Under system, again, there are quite a few things available. Not least you'll see there is an installer here. We're running from a live USB drive, which is what Nomad BSD is intended for, but you can run up an installer here if you wanted to. Obviously, check you put your password in first and you would install on your hard drive at Nomad BSD. I don't think I'm going to do that. Other than that, under utilities, there's various bits and pieces here. Nice to see the HP device manager there so we can actually make sure we can link to HP printers and scanners and things like that. Is that going to run up? It is, there we are. No HP devices found, which is obviously is correct right now. There's nothing connected, but we could use that if we wanted to. And it's appeared up on the panel to uh, show us it's uh, there. So we've got lots of things available here from this uh, right click menu. Also including, as you can see, you can add different desktops, reconfigure things, log out, etc. Shall we also take a look at what's down here on this lovely uh, graphical little launcher? Let's just run up the uh, file browser here to show you what that looks like. That will come up. This file space here is file space which is on the USB drive. Remember I used a 32 gigabyte drive and we've got 22 gigabytes free just over in the, the Nomad home directory here with the usual sort of directories you'd see on say a Linux system. And I've put a few files in some of these. We can go to say pictures. If I click on that, it should hopefully run up the Mirage viewer. It does, it, it's responsive for a live USB system, isn't it? This really is rather impressive. I do like this system. Let's go back to uh, where we were, leave things nice and tidy. Uh, let's close that down. What else is down here? We've got a terminal for doing all the terminal stuff, as you would expect. We could do a ls for list as we would in Linux and see where we are. And we can presumably exit like that. There we are. Oh, highlights in red to show us what we're doing. The Firefox browser is pre-installed. Again, let's run it up. Again, running from a live USB drive, but seems to work and hopefully will take us to, oh, a very good website. That's good, clearly we can browse. I've tested this out, you can run video. It all works very well, web browsing is very good. And of course, having a good web browser on a live USB drive operating system is very handy. It means you can go and browse the web in a completely safe environment, which is not gonna affect your main computer. We've also got down here an email package, I've not set that up. We've got LibreOffice have to run up LibreOffice. I think it's the law to show LibreOffice in any test of any operating system. I've got a test document there, which I've saved on the drive. You see persistence works on this system. You can save your files and come back to it by just booting up again from the live USB drive. We've also got a calculator. Got to have a calculator. And again, I think that's the law to have a calculator on a computer. We've got a leaf pad for uh, doing little bits of uh, file-based stuff there. We've got Gini, which we saw earlier. This is interactive development environment for writing stuff in all kinds of different code if you wish. There are templates here for lots and lots of different languages and things you can use there. Uh, we've got a, a media player, which will obviously be used to play media. I find this slightly strange because there isn't a menu you can bring up here which actually allows you to just bring in recent files. You have to drag and drop. So to be honest, it's easier to go to the, the file manager as we'll do over there. Bring that back up again. Let's go to a videos and player the video, which will come up in that media player, I think in a second, not in VLC. Yes, it plays good videos, as you can see. That's uh, rather nice to uh, find out. Let's close that down as well. And then finally down here, we'll just have a little look at a GIMP, because GIMP is here as well. You really get a lot, don't you? It's amazing. We, we set up this live USB drive very quickly. You can plug it into a PC. It runs up. You've got all these applications available. It really is it shows where computing has gone, doesn't it? How much you can do on, on low resources these days. Let's just uh, do something in GIMP to prove it works. What should we do? Render, um, let's render a, oh, let's do a spiral. Make us all feel really, really strange. There we are. Rather strange, get rid of that. It makes me, oh, I'm feeling, dear me, this card changes. I can still see it, can you? Very, very strange. And uh, over here, this is not the Pac-Man game. This is the Octo Package Manager. Just bring that up and hopefully there, there it is. And here we could search for programs. I could search for, I don't know, uh, Caden Live. Is Caden Live available? Most Linux programs can be installed in the FreeBSD, so they should be installed But here. Yes, we can install Caden Live if we wanted to. So you can install more software than what's already available. Uh, we have a manual, which is a rather good, a Nomad BSD handbook, which is, of course, a web page. This will take us out to the web and we can see all the information on setting things up and configuring things. This is a very, very good documentation. I'm very impressed with 
know about BSD, not just the operating system itself, but how well it's presented, the website, the, the documentation, it really is a very nice thing to look at. And then finally, of course, we can leave. We've got down here something labeled leave. I like that, it's not a shut down, it's leave. You can leave me now, it says. You can click on that. And of course, there's lots of different uh, leave options. And I think having lost all the things we've got here, that's now the best thing for us to do. So I'm going to uh, shut down the system. There we are. And we'll come out of Nomad BSD. If you want to run a non-Linux operating system from a USB drive, then Nomad BSD is well worth considering. In my test, it's worked well on a number of different computers, although the last machine I tried was my ZenBook laptop, where it wouldn't pick up the trackpad, and so I had to plug in a mouse, although things like the Wi-Fi drivers worked absolutely fine. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, press the start like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Um.